Howdy everybody. So today we are going to do our first set of notes. I'm going to try to make these as uh, short and sweet as possible. This should all be review from your science classes all throughout elementary as well as middle school and now that you're in high school. So we're just going to quickly review the scientific method and talk about uh, experimental design. So these are going to be skills that you are going to be using throughout the entire year. Um, not just for conducting lab experiments in this class, but you can also use uh, these skills for a lot of other subjects. So the first thing is you need to understand what the scientific method is. And so the scientific method is what we call the process uh, that we use to answer questions through experiments. We're going to abbreviate questions with a Q. Experiment. Okay. So how do we get these questions? So in your everyday life, or, you know, if you go on to be a scientist or stuff like that, but anybody can do this. Uh, you might have a question from things that you are just, you know, observing, just regular everyday observations. And so they'll be like, well, I wonder if this happens because of this uh, or things like that. So questions arise from observations. And through these observations, people, and those people could be, you know, researchers, or it could just be you. Uh, so questions arise from observations, which someone, so someone can be you or someone else, uh, but that person is going to develop a research question. <clears throat> So you observe something and it rises a question. So we're going to call that a research question or questions. Um, and this, you know, when you have a question, you want an answer. So that's the first thing is what is the scientific method? So you are trying to develop a process in order to answer a question from something that you observed. And so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a hypothesis. So hypothesis is something that uh, you hear a lot in science and you've gotten different uh, definitions, um, but this is going to be the explanation or what you think the explanation for your observation. And this hypothesis is going to be a question or statement that can be tested. And I'm going to underline this. So um, you may have you know, learned a hypothesis is an educated guess. Okay, but you can have an educated guess and then that's it. So in order for you to try to see if uh, that guess is correct, you need to be able to test it. So for the purposes of this class and hopefully from now on, you, this is your go-to definition. It has to be testable. It can't just be a random guess and then that's it. Okay, so I'm going to write that right under here. It's not just an educated guess. Your hypothesis does need to be an educated hypothesis. You can't just be like, oh, well, because the sky is black. Um, but it has to be testable. So you usually see hypotheses in an if-then statement. Not always, but that's kind of like the the formula that we have for these hypotheses. Later on, if you go into upper level uh, sciences and stuff like that, you'll see statements written or hypotheses uh, written a little bit differently. But for now, it's a if then. Okay. And then the last really important thing for hypothesis 
is that you never prove something beyond doubt. So you can't say, well, this is going to be, this is the law. Uh, that's very, very uh, hard for something to happen. You see that in like physics where you have, you know, certain laws and stuff like that. Uh, but for life sciences, um, it's a little more complicated than that. So it's never proven beyond doubt. We say that a hypothesis is uh, either supported or rejected. So it, it appears that, you know, we have, um, we can kind of, um, we have data that supports this hypothesis, that backs it up, or it, it doesn't back it up. So we say that the hypothesis is rejected. All right, so that's kind of the scientific method. And so we're going to move on to the next part, which would be the experimental design. And so experimental design is going to be a method. So let me write that down real quick. So experimental design. This is the method for developing an experiment to test the hypothesis. So now that we've made an observation, uh, we've designed a research question, and now we have a hypothesis. We think um, that this happens if this. So now we have to test it. So that was the key thing for the uh, hypothesis that it has to be tested. Test hypothesis. <clears throat> All right, so when you are designing your experiment, you have to think about the variables. So what are the things that you are going to manipulate? And there's different kinds of variables. So we have kinds of variables. The first type of variable is going to be the controlled variable. So that's the first type. Uh, we, or you may know this more as a constant or the constants. So these are the things that are not changed so that you have something known as a fair test. You want to make sure that you only change one thing so that you can really trust uh, the results of your experiment. Okay. So this is so that only the variable being tested is the only thing change. So for example, if you are trying to see how the amount of water impacts plant growth, you want to make sure that they all have the same type of soil, the, uh, they all get the same amount of light, that you're testing the same type of plant, that you water them at the same time. So all of these would be the controlled variables or the constants. And since you're only testing how the amount of water impacts it, um, that would be your only non-constant. That's the thing that you change. And so that is known as the uh, independent variable. And I'm going to abbreviate that as IV. Okay, so this is going to be the thing that you change on purpose. You're trying to see what is the impact that this uh, variable has. Okay, looks like I ran out of space. So, move back up. All right, so from the independent variable, that leads us to the dependent variable. So 
and I'm going to abbreviate that as the dv. So this is our dependent variable. And this is what appears to be affected. by the independent variable. So the independent variable is your cause, and then the dependent variable is your effect. So this dependent variable is what is observed So back to our effect of the amount of water. So the effect or the dependent variable would be how much the plant grows. So that is what is observed or what is measured. Then this is what you use to collect your data. All right, so now we're going to go and kind of um, define what data is. Okay, so your data, um, or you may, you know, know this as kind of like the results section of your experiment. This is the measurements that you get. These measurements are from the experiment. And then, all right, so your results can be categorized into two different types. And the first type is going to be uh, probably what you're more familiar with, um, especially if you've already taken like physics or chemistry, and that is going to be your quantitative type of data. Uh, so this is going to be like, uh, you know, volume or measurement or like length and stuff like that. So this is going to be in numbers. And the second type of data or results is going to be your qualitative. And this is going to be in uh, words or like a description. So if you had to, you know, describe like the change in color or in the consistency of chemicals or things like that. So it's going to be words slash description. And the big thing about the results or your data is that you're going to have to analyze this. So you're not just collecting data for data's sake. You have to analyze, okay, what does this mean? And you typically do that by graphing, or uh, you can also use mathematical analysis. And this is where courses like uh, statistics comes in, you can see like the significance uh, of the change and stuff like that. We're not going to go too much into the mathematical analysis part in this class, uh, but we are going to be graphing to kind of get like a general idea of, um, you know, what effect the independent variable has on things. So for example, back to the uh, plant growth, we would maybe create like a bar graph uh, so that way we can compare um, you know, the chain or the difference between uh, the growth of the plants. All right, and then the last part is going to be your conclusion. And this is where you are going to summarize your results or your data, and you are going to analyze or kind of like describe, um, interpret, if they support. So if your results support uh, or reject the hypothesis that you made. Okay, so, so for example, with the plants, if you see that they all had the same growth, they all grew to five centimeters, even though the amount of water you gave them was different, then you would say that you would reject the hypothesis. Or if you see that there is a 
change in the growth of the plant, then you would say that it supports your hypothesis. You never say that this proves your hypothesis is correct. You would just say, my results support the initial hypothesis. Okay, uh, so that is kind of the gist of so the scientific method and experimental design. And then we're, gonna, uh, we're going to be using these skills uh, throughout the year. So make sure you um, are familiar with everything. If you still have any questions or anything like that, uh, just let me know and I will help you out.